Oh, welcome to the channel. Today I'm about to check out Film Theory. Huh, Paw Patrol. Yet again, Ryder is evil. I'm, I'm, I'm just surprised that there's another episode because the previous one we were hearing things like, uh, uh, Ryder was exploiting stray dogs to, uh, uh, uh be heroes. You know, uh, you know, patrol ish. Just because they're expendable and they don't really have to get paid. They're like, uh, it's like, yeah, cheap labor, you know, animal labor. Just just because, because it's easy, light work, right? And because all you got to do is buy like biscuits and them and that's their treat. You don't really got to pay them bread. And if someone, you know, logs out the server, you can just get a new real quick, train him real quick and GG's back on the market. But now I don't even know how more evil that could be because this is a kid's show. This is Paw Patrol. I don't even know how much darker this ish could get. But yeah, let's see why Ryder is supposedly evil. I'm just curious what's his thinking process when he what else could be worse than what he was doing before? Last time I covered Paw Patrol, I convinced you that this kid, Ryder, child genius inventor, was recruiting homeless dogs to use as members of his crew of rescue yep. animals, the Paw Patrol. Why? Well, because the missions oh, well, are dangerous, dogs are cheaper and more expendable than humans, and stray dogs are the most expendable of all. Yep. Now, obviously, what Ryder's doing there is real bad, but the crimes of Ryder don't just stop there, my friends. Not only is he putting his dogs into the direct line of danger with little regard to their mm. well-being, being he's the one creating those dangerous situations okay no 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 before you come at me with your theories i'm gonna first say that that was some b that just sounds like straight bs because what would he get what could he possibly hmm i think i answered my own question because my question was going to be what could he possibly gain from causing all these crimes and blah 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 right what would he get from losing more power? So maybe it's like from a marketing point, so he could get paid more, get uh more sponsors and ish. Maybe 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 that's the approach he's going for, possibly. But that's the only reason I can think of money wise. So yeah. In the first place, get ready, all you good pops, because today we're exposing Ryder for the money hungry criminal mastermind that he really is. <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, where they're all dead pups, and they'll be replaced. Ah, Robo, you did him dirty. Round adventure, bay. D -d 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 dead Patrol. So it's been a couple months since I last covered Paw Patrol, and due to the blessings of owning a four-year-old who's discovering media for the first time, I am still watching a ton of the show. Now, if you've somehow missed this gargantuan hit of a Nickelodeon series, the Paw Patrol are a team of six puppies led yep. by a boy named Ryder. Ryder. Each pup has a specialized set of skills, vehicles, and tech that Ryder designs based on typical emergency services. We have Chase the police the dog, cop, Marshall the firefighter, firefighter, Sky the aviation pup, Rubble the construction dog, Zuma for water rescue, and Rocky for garbage collection. Episodes of the show are a pretty classic action adventure fair. There's a problem that needs solving somewhere in Adventure Bay. The Paw Patrol suit up and say, Ready for action, Ryder, sir! And then they use their technology, teamwork, and winches, lots and lots of winches. Yeah, you talked about that last time. Happy. Have the farm pigs run away call the paw patrol is a plane about to crash land call the paw, paw patrol. patrol has the villainous mayor of a nearby town discovered an ancient relic in the jungle that turns him into a monkey call the paw patrol now the monkey magic pa okay yeah they uh, they started running out of ideas and they just thought hell this is a kid's show let's just go crazy with this ish talking about now the monkey magic power will be mine well, Rachel, yeah, okay, okay. Tell now Just that I'm into the late season, the rescues get real weird. Don't even get me started on the Mer Pups and the quest to save Puplantis. Pups with fish tails? Must be Mer Pups. <laughs> So oh that's god. The the show. Cute, simple, cut and dry. But if you look even just a little bit past the surface level, you realize that not everything's peachy keen in Adventure Bay. In our last theory, we concluded that there were pups in the Paw Patrol before the main six yeah. of the series. Pups who died in the line of duty mm -hmm. before being callously replaced. Ryder himself was the mastermind of the whole operation, finding stray and abandoned dogs to recruit for his dangerous rescue missions, knowing full well that if they die, well, they can just be They're expendable, yes. Yeah. And on top of all of that, Ryder doesn't even pay the pups with anything but treats. He keeps the considerable amount of money generated from their merch sales, government contracts, and literal stolen gold coins all to himself. Whoa! Real old-time outlaw loot? 
Okay. So, okay, the kid's a bit unethical in the way that he treats his pups. Not great, but overall, Ryder and the Paw Patrol are doing far more good than bad, right? They're solving problems. They're saving lives. Yeah. It's just what has to be done in the line of duty. It might make Ryder a bit of a jerk, but it doesn't make him evil, right? Well, loyal theorists, as I've continued to watch more and more of the show, my suspicions around Ryder have only increased. You see, in later seasons, a lot of the problems plaguing Adventure Bay are caused by the various villains of the show. Mayor Humdinger, Sweetie, the Kitten Catastrophe Crew, but the technology that they use sure looks an awful lot like the stuff that Ryder builds for the Paw Patrol. And that's because Ryder is doing much worse than just taking advantage of disasters and putting innocent pups in danger to make a quick buck. As the series goes on, it seems like Ryder is the one creating the dangerous scenarios that but are putting why everyone though? at why? risk. He's selling many of the villains his technology. He's hoping that they're going to create more trouble for the Paw Patrol to solve. In short, Ryder is a war profiteer. He's an arms dealer who's planned all the sides, and in the process, he's putting both his dogs and his town Okay, Prince. like I, yeah, I even said at the beginning, this has got to do something with, like, got to do something with money, but I never really thought of, about him selling his equipment to the bad guys. It's like uh, cops selling the drugs they got from the streets back to the criminals to get that money, to get, you know, just to get that paycheck real quick. Okay, so something like that. Early sits atop his ivory tower, the lookout. Now, obviously, those are big claims, so let's step back and look at the proof that Ryder has actually given his tech to the villains, shall we? In season one, we meet Mayor Humdinger, the very competitive elected leader from the nearby town of Foggy Bottom. Mm. We're told that he always wins the competitions that he enters. Looks like another year on top for the town of Foggy Bottom. Once a cake contest winner, always a cake contest winner. Well, that is, until the pop Patrol rolls into town and suddenly helps Mayor Goodway win all the contests. From hot air ballooning and cake making to cleaning up and basketball. Thank you, Judge. Of course, I couldn't have done it without your help, Ryder. After that, Humdinger is just no longer the top dog. And no matter how hard he tries, he just can't seem to win. Goodway is always getting help from the Paw Patrol, which means that he's always playing catch up. So far, so good. Just a little healthy competition, right? Well, in season two, sick of always losing, Humdinger pulls out a new strategy. A new set of minions. Presenting the Kitten Catastrophe Crew. Very good at being very bad. The Kitten Catastrophe Even the fits crew are similar. are tasked with getting Humdinger whatever he wants. They sabotage water towers, they make messes, they steal giant gold chicken statues. I'm a chicken! But here's the weird thing about the Catastrophe Crew. Each kitten directly maps onto a Paw Patrol member. Yeah, yeah, I knew Yeah, bro, come on, bro. That's uh, Zuma, that's Chase, that's Garden Boy, that's Sky, that's Rubble, and that's Chuck. What's his name? Chuck? Tommy, Tommy, Tommy or Chuck. Their pup packs, <laughs> I guess cat packs, have the exact same equipment as their Paw Patrol counterparts. Cat Chase uses a zipline and launcher, just like real Chase. Yep. Sky has wings, just like the original yeah. Sky. Cat Rocky has a claw arm, just like the dog Rocky. You get the idea. Now, yeah. at this point, you might be wondering, well, isn't Humdinger oh, just Rocky. super tech savvy? Couldn't he have just replicated Ryder's technology rather than it being given yeah, to him? Couldn't he? That's what I thought at first, too. Except for one thing, Humdinger ain't exactly what you'd call a tech whiz. In season 5 episode 17, Pups Save the Movie Monster, Humdinger tries to steal a robot monster but just doesn't understand its controls. Oh, this remote looks complicated. Maybe if I push this button. <laughs> And in the Paw Patrol movie, his complete ignorance of technology is what causes the Cloud Catcher to malfunction and destroy Adventure City. Now, those are just two instances, but across the series, there are plenty of examples where he's just not that great with tech. That said, Mayor Humdinger does try to create several inventions throughout his appearances in the series, and they're just awful in comparison to the stuff that we see Ryder make. For yeah. example, in Season 3, Episode 3, Pup Save the Soccer Game, Humdinger creates a remote control ball in an attempt to cheat and win a soccer game. And yet, his remote short circuits and breaks, causing the ball to lose control. It gets so bad that the Paw Patrol has to step in and save the day. Now, I don't know about you, but a remote-controlled soccer ball seems just a little bit less complicated than a voice-controlled cat pack with a freely- Yeah, bro, like, that just seems so basic. Just, 
direct where you're going, my guy. Rotating fully operational robot arm. And yet, it malfunctions with barely any prompting. And this isn't just a one-time thing either. In Season 4, Episode 2, Pups Save the Cat Show, Humdinger creates a robot cat to win yet another competition. But when it trips and falls onto the floor, it goes haywire, requiring the Paw Patrol's intervention. Later in Season 4, this time Episode 16, Sea Patrol Pups Save a Shark, he creates a robotic shark that's powered by a wooden contraption that resembles a hamster wheel. Not exactly top-of-the-line tech, but more important, the stability of that shark is atrocious. Its internal welding gives way and the shark begins to flood after it gets hit. This is absolutely not That's on par with dead, the quality of engineering bro. that we see with both the Paw Patrol packs and the Catastrophe Crew packs, which get thrown around a lot during the rescue missions and dastardly plots. It only makes sense if Ryder was the one who created all of the tech. Now, it'd be one thing if the Kitten Catastrophe Crew were the only bad guys to have identical Pup Pack tech. At that point, maybe you could just write it off as a coincidence. But the yeah. Catastrophe crew are far from the only rogues in the Paw Patrol gallery to use tech eerily similar to Ryder's inventions. The Rescue Knight series introduces us to Claw, an ex-knight and the villain terrorizing the kingdom of Barkingburg. By the time the Paw Patrol face off with this guy, he already has his own personal pup pack with a claw that can grab things, functionally and aesthetically identical to the packs used by the Paw Patrol. Then, in the Mission Paw series, we meet Sweetie, the pet of the Princess of Barkingburg. Unlike what her name would suggest, Sweetie is anything but. She's the biggest cause of trouble in the Mission Paw series, with crimes ranging from theft to kidnapping. Now, all of this is possible only because of her vehicle and her pup pack, complete with a pincer, vacuum, and even a selfie stick. Guess you gotta keep your followers up to date on oh that gosh. hashtag villain life. And once again, all of it is strikingly similar to the designs that Ryder has for the Paw Patrol. In fact, when Sweetie suits up, her attire matches the aesthetics of the Mission Paw outfits that the Paw Patrol is wearing. Mm. With color accents. This actually has to be one of the biggest pieces of evidence towards Sweetie's gear being a Ryder original creation. See, this isn't a case of Sweetie seeing the Paw Patrol's look and liking it enough to copy it, or Ryder seeing Sweetie and digging her outfit to make it into a Paw Patrol uniform. No, Sweetie puts this outfit on before any of the Paw Patrol pups puts theirs on, and the Paw Patrol suit up before Ryder sees Sweetie in the gear. This cannot be a coincidence. They have to have been made by the same person. But okay, maybe this sort of technology is just super common in the Paw Patrol universe. Sometimes that's what I may be thinking, also like maybe... Ryder's not the only... This is a royal family, you know? So maybe they found a tech whiz for the... For the puppy. For the... Yeah, that's what I'm... Or maybe hater. pup packs are something that you could just order from your local Best Buy. But again, that's not the case. As we called out in our last theory, the Paw Patrol are relative unknowns in this world. They're only becoming more well-known as the series progresses because of their daring rescues. Rescue dogs and technology for cats is not something that exists normally in this universe. It is specifically being built by one guy, Ryder. Alright, Matt Pata here is saying, sure, the tech used by Sweetie, Claw, and the Kitten Catastrophe crew are similar to the Paw Patrols, but maybe... Maybe that's just how technology looks in this universe. That would be a fantastic explanation for what we're seeing here. A lot of times the art direction of a show, especially an animated show, can end up with characters and technology designs that look samey. And while the Paw Patrol yeah. series definitely has an art style that it sticks to, it also goes out of its way to show that different technologies made by different people look different compared to the Paw Patrol's pup packs. We already pointed out how different and almost primitive Humdinger's tech looks compared to Riders, but there are other examples throughout the series. For for example, the Rough Rough Pack are a group of villainous biker dogs featured in the Moto Pup series, and its three members all have pup packs as well. But their packs are way different from the ones that we know that Ryder makes. Okay. Every pack that we've seen up to this point looks very similar. They're made with clean, cylindrical, or cuboidal pieces, and their joints are easy to move. Plus, they're all colored and feature iconography that matches the pup or kitten that they were made for. The Rough Rough Pack's gear, however, looks like it was made with limited time and resources. These packs are older, rusty, they're made using scrap metal. The joints are barely held together with screws and bolts. This suggests that they were made by Gaskin, who we know is an amateur inventor. Okay, here it is. The first official Rough Rough Pack Roll! So clearly the show's art style cares enough to indicate when technology is made by other inventors. The Rough Rough Pack scrapyard inventions, Humdinger's early primitive tech. Okay. The crew, sweetie, there's no other way to explain it. It had to have come from Ryder. So Ryder is clearly designing the tech that villains like Humdinger and Sweetie want up using throughout the series, but why? Doesn't necessarily seem like a great business model to just be giving your tech away, but just look at what happens once these villains get a hold of it. In season one, the pups' rescues can honestly seem pretty trivial. They help the farm
farmers out during the fall festival, they gather up some lost bunnies, they help Mayor Goodway win a few competitions, and, in rare cases, they fight the occasional fire. It's not exactly the high-stakes rescues that Ryder was hoping for when he started the Paw Patrol to make cash off of disasters. But then, look at the escalation. By Season 7, they're being hired out by royalty to protect the crown jewels as private bodyguards. They're being asked by Mayor Goodway to save stolen Ferris wheels. Crimes that are only made possible thanks to his technology getting in the hands of the show's villains. Now what is this adorable yet strangely suspicious kitten up to? <laughs> Ryder is clearly a smart kid and a shrewd businessman, and he takes his opportunities where he sees them. Take Humdinger, for instance. Clearly, the competition between the towns was important to him, and as time goes on, he gets more and more discouraged as he loses because of the Paw Patrol, to the point where he's suddenly willing to cheat in a way that he never did before. Think about it. In Season 1, we never see Humdinger do anything shady or illegal. Okay. He's just a really competitive guy from a nearby city. And yet, in Season 2, we immediately see Humdinger playing dirty, as well as ignoring both laws and the safety of others as he destroys and vandalizes property. What's changed? One thing. He now has his own minions in the Kitten Catastrophe crew. Minions outfitted with Ryder's tech. Ryder yeah. saw the competitiveness in Humdinger and exploited it. He created a villain in Humdinger and the Catastrophe crew to escalate the problems that the Paw Patrol to get more bread to. and shit up. Just tracking down misidentified cows in the snow. They're stopping bona fide bad guys. Ryder can suddenly charge more for it. He can get more publicity for exactly. it. Exactly. building an empire for both his exploited rescue pups and the technology that allows this stuff to happen. But it doesn't stop there, friends. Ryder expands his little racket beyond Adventure Bay and even Adventure City. He seeks out new locations like Barkingburg, where he can give other international. He creates new villains, and therefore new disasters on a scale that even he couldn't have dreamed of before. Instead of a vehicle, Claw uses his pup pack to find a magical dragon tooth that lets him control a real, actual dragon, which he then directs onto the people and city of Barkingburg. When the pup wow. Wow. Over that disaster, Ryder couldn't ask for better publicity. Brave pups led by genius boy save city from dragon. With achievements like that under his belt, just like that, Ryder has suddenly made himself a valuable new client for life in the Princess of Barkingburg. But worst of all, the kid doesn't even bother to make sure that the bad guys see proper justice. He isn't taking the steps required True. to prevent these from happening in the future. Sure. I mean, it's a it's a kid's show, but then again, you know, true, true. Sweetie is often put in the proverbial doghouse when she's caught, but she's out again by the very next episode and a humdinger and the kitten catastrophe crew Ryder doesn't even bother to arrest them when they're caught red-handed yeah. instead they're just slapped with the catchphrase oh that troublesome mayor before getting off scot-free ready to wreak more havoc in the very next episode Ryder is the city's law enforcement here arresting criminals would fall under his jurisdiction but he doesn't because that would be bad for business. One thing's clear, Ryder is no hero. Not only does he put the lives of his pups into constant danger with little regard for whether they live or die in the disasters they face, but he's responsible for creating those disasters in the first place. Mm. In his greed, Ryder encourages these misguided souls to cheat and commit crimes in order to drive up business for himself, strengthening his empire as it spreads from city to city. Ryder offers them advanced tech to escalate their crimes to new heights and then doesn't apprehend them to prevent future crimes. Ryder is the Paw Patrol's worst enemy. The true villain of this franchise sitting pretty atop his Scrooge McDuckian pile of cash while he puts mm. the lives of both his pups and innocent people on the line. Sure, they all may be good pups, but Ryder, he's bad to the bone. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Well, damn, Roy. Just when you thought Ryder couldn't get more devious. Golly. My dude's a menace. What's next? Okay, let's see. We got... um, uh, Dog labor, animal labor, free animal labor, expendable, leads them to their death. That's one. Two, he's the one that's starting up these crimes anyway. That's one. Okay, I got one. Maybe this is a, nah, but this wouldn't really go far. Uh, what if for what if uh what um Ryder is the reason why the puppies are strays? I don't know if that if that's anything anything to work with, but what I mean is that like what if he keeps selling these weapons? to these people 
so more catastrophe could happen, meaning more people will get destroyed, meaning more pups will not get fed, meaning more pups will become strays. So, then he will send one on a grueling mission that he knows, ah, right, this, there's a chance this one might die, but if they do die, I got a backup waiting for me right here. That type of energy. But yeah, man, that's been Paw Patrol for you. Uh, film theory, shout out, man, Pack. Dude be killing them with these theories. I love him. But damn, bro, Ryder, who would have thought, man? Uh, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know which other video to check out, and I'm gonna do so. But with that said, I will see you guys later.